Hello everybody, my name is Josh, and welcome back to the Zelda Classic Second Quest playthrough. This is part two, and we're going to be tackling the first level today. So, let's just jump right in here. I'm going to have to explain a few things about this certain episode and why uh, I'm doing post-commentary for this episode. There's a very good reason why I'm doing post-commentary for this episode, um, and I'm going to explain it right now. The first thing you're going to notice about this part is that... Um, it's rather choppy, there's nothing I can do about that. Um, I can't really do much more about it right now, that was a choppy moment right there. Um, there, there's really nothing I can do about it there, so, yeah, that's fun. Anyway, let's move on here. Uh, the reason why I am recording this part in post-commentary is because, well, quite fun, really. Um, oh my god, it's frozen for so long here. Why is it frozen? <sighs> Whatever. So the reason why I'm doing post-commentary for this episode is because the audio for this episode, for some reason, got really screwed up. Um, like, the first, the opening and the ending of the episode was fine, but then, like, everything in between was not. So, I kinda just decided to throw in the hatchet and decide to completely uh, post-commentate the part while keeping the video, which, for the most part, mainly in the dungeon, is fine. Um, there's just a couple things I'm grabbing out in the overworld before heading to level 1. That's uh, so stupid! Oh my god! So, yeah, we just went and bought the arrow, in case he wanted to know that, and that's what we bought there, so that's beautiful. Um, just gonna go buy a potion now. So yeah, that's why this episode is in post commentary. Um, I apologize for that. I'm going to try not to do this again. I'm going to try and keep it same for level two onwards. Um, so yeah. So let's discuss what's going on right here. Oh yeah, you should also thank me. Um, I am putting the music in so that it's not just complete silence. Um, I'm just putting the music in there. I'm not putting in like sound effects and whatnot. I'm just having making sure that the music that's playing is the same music that's always playing per se because I didn't want it to be a complete silence for you guys and that would be a bit stupid if it was. So yeah. Anyway, now that that is done, we have bought both the arrow and a red potion which we won't be needing for a while hopefully. We can now head to level 1, and level 1 is located in the same spot that it is in the first quest, so it's in the middle of the lake, uh, right in the middle of the overworld. Uh, so it's one of the few places that has stayed the same in the second quest, um, but there is a lot more places that have changed. I'm very happy that the game is running, it's not lagging as much anymore, which is very good. So here's level 1 right here. And welcome to level 1. So, let's jump right into it here. It took a bit to load up the game there. Um, so level 1 in this, in the second quest, is quite a bit harder mainly because you can't actually have the white sword yet. Um, we are forced to use the wooden sword, which is fun. Here's the boomerang and the room right to the right of the entrance, which is great to get. I'm very happy that this is here. So we're going to grab it now, and we're going to move on. We're going to come back to this room uh, once we finish clearing out this level, but this level by itself is not too hard. Um, basically, the main thing here is that you don't have the firepower that you do in the first quest, um, so it's just kind of working your way out and figuring that out. There's a key in that room, you'll want to grab it. Um, you'll find in the second quest that the keys are far more useful and that you will most likely need them all. Starfos are now in the second quest, purely Starfos 2s and they shoot swords. While contact with the Starfos is still the same as it was in the first quest, uh, getting hit by the sword beams that they throw does a lot of damage. Uh, even with the blue ring, it's still quite a bit of damage. And the compass is in that room, by the way. So yeah, they're not kidding when we talk about um, raising the difficulty of this place, because they really do raise the difficulty of this place. Um, 
despite the fact that level 1 in the second quest is actually quite small, uh, it's not a very large level, um, it's quite a bit more difficult than the first quest level 1. And that mainly being in this room right here where we actually have Blue Gariahs, which were not introduced in the second quest until the level 2. Maybe not even level 2 in the first quest, so yeah, they start throwing them at you straight away in this quest, which is quite fun. You're gonna need a key here to... You're gonna need a key there to get the map that we saw in the previous room. Uh, come up, there's a couple of uh, Moldorms up here. I think these are called Moldorms. I have forgotten. Uh, probably gotten it wrong. Pretty sure they're called Moldorms. Um, that or I'm getting them mixed up with land molars. It's either a Moldorm or a land molar, although I'm pretty sure it's a Moldorm. Uh, again, the Moldorms aren't too difficult to take out. They're kind of just there, honestly. Um, it's just a room. That's it. Fun times. And there's a Dodongo in this room as well, so don't come in here without bombs if you want that map, because you're gonna need bombs. Uh, if you don't know already, Smoke Trick works wonders on them. Uh, if you lay a second bomb after they beat the first one, a short, a little bit after you lay the first bomb, uh, then you can lay a second bomb and smoke them out easily. Um, smoking them out does make it so that you can hit them and get bombs back every time, basically. So yeah, level 1 is in the shape of an E, and the first five levels of the second quest are all letters and will actually spell out a word. Um, it may be pretty obvious what word it's trying to spell out, but in case you don't know, um, I'm not going to tell you, because it's stupid, we'll figure it out by the time we get to level 5. Okay, heading back down to the opening area here, we're going to head right, and we're going to bomb up, so you need bombs to even progress in this place. Um, yeah, you can't just enter here without bombs. Um, you can try, but you're not going to get very far. And I was just hitting everything over and over again here. I was not doing this very well at all. Um, using the half tile to my advantage to avoid getting hit. Very nice. Okay, so you want to bomb up, as is the only way that you can access this room up above. Getting the map is probably actually quite helpful to tell you that this is over here. Um, <laughs> otherwise you might very well forget about it. You want to enter the passage here, and you need to go through the passage as uh, this will take you to the upper end of the level that you couldn't access before, and you can't access the upper part of this level from the lower area. Um, and yeah, in case they weren't saying this game, they're really starting to pull out all the stops, uh, yeah, you get bubbles immediately in level 1. So, have fun with that. Um, it's not my idea of fun, but you do need to defeat them as you get the key to open the door here. Unless you didn't get the map in which you can just bypass them and head straight through. This next room, you'll probably want to equip bombs immediately as you enter. Uh, this room is horrendous. Just literally bomb and head up. That room gives you nothing as well, so it's just kind of pointless. Once again, the boss of level 1 is Aquamentus. Um, He's a bit more... he only takes a couple more hits because of your wooden sword, but it's still a really easy fight, especially if you have the magical shield. Even if you don't have the magical shield, it's just really easy in general. Alright, here's the first Triforce piece. We are on our way, ladies and gentlemen. Feels... <coughs> Crap. Ah, that hurt my throat. Anyway, feels good to say that. We have finally got a foothold in this level which makes me very happy. So we're going to go grab one more thing before we move on. The video the video lagging seems to only be a problem in the overworld. The dungeon ran basically perfectly. Um, so now that we have five hearts, we can go grab the white sword. Um, and the white sword is another one of the few locations that are the exact same in the second quest, in which case it is up on the top of the waterfall. Um, yeah, so we're going to head that way and grab the sword, because more firepower is great. And you'll definitely want the white sword for level 2. Uh, as I said, this is the second quest, and they start ramping up the difficulty really early and really quickly. So, like, any, any and all power-ups and extensions of power you can get are extremely helpful. Um, I'm just going to take care of this 
Lionel right here. You can thank me for putting in all this effort to make this a much more pleasurable view viewing experience later on. Here's the white sword on top of the waterfall. Same location as in the first quest. Be thankful when we get to the custom third quest, the white sword is not going to be up here. Anyway, that ends this segment of the game. Part 3 will come out when I have time to create the episode. That's what I, That's what's going on right now. It's mainly when I have time to live stream or create an episode and I'm not overworked with assessments and whatnot for school and whatever. So, yeah, that's that. I hope you all enjoyed, it. I hope you all enjoyed this episode. I'll see you all for part three where we'll go through level two. Goodbye!